Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 1, Introduction to Computer User Support. In this chapter we are going to provide an overview of computer systems, computer users, and the computer user support position. You're going to be provided with a brief introduction to the history of modern computers. Then you'll learn about the different ways to classify computer users, the resources that users require, and common problems that computer users will encounter in their day-to-day -day workplace. The final sections of the chapter provide an introduction to computer user support, including understanding the different ways that organizations provide this function, position descriptions for user support staff, and the different career paths for user support workers. Let's go ahead and take a look at our objectives now for this first chapter. We're going to look at how changes in computer technology over time have affected computer use, different ways to classify our end users, the different resources that our computer users need. Major categories of the end user software that you might see. Common problems encountered by users. The job market demand for our user support workers. Common ways to organize and provide support services. Some of the typical position descriptions for user support staff. Different knowledge, skills, and abilities required for an entry level support position in the computing world and career paths for user support workers. Okay, now that we've looked at what our objectives are for this first chapter, let's go ahead and dive on into the chapter. Now, throughout this chapter, you're going to find out there are a lot of terms, and a lot of these terms you will use in many different courses as you're pursuing your different degrees in IT, but you will see that some of these are just commonly used terms in your day-to-day -day activities. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of those now. Now the first term we come across is end user computing. Now this is just the use of computer technology for both business and personal use for those users at home. Now as you work in any organization you'll find that workers here in the 21st century use personal computers or what's known as PCs more commonly to accomplish their work. Now more than ever most people have computers in their homes or use computers in such public places, libraries, coffee shops, schools, various places on all types of platforms, whether it's a laptop, a smartphone, or even tablets. So that term is just so common in today by using the term end user computing. We also see the term in, in the chapter knowledge worker. This is just any employee whose primary job is to collect, prepare, process, and distribute any type of information within the organization. Due to the growth in the number of knowledge workers in the shifts in our economy, that's why we hear this term more and more often today. And you'll see another term here, graphical user interface, what we mostly commonly just say is GUI. And these are just screen images that enable users to access software features and functions intuitively using a mouse or a pointing device rather than doing command line based interfacing where you're just typing in, you know, weird lines of code to get anything done. It's all done in the background for you, and now you just use a GUI. We kind of take this for granted now, but we really didn't start seeing this in the computing world until probably the late 80s and early 90s. And as of this year, you know, we have the 25th anniversary of the Windows 95. Sorry, I said that wrong. That would be the 20th anniversary of the introduction of Windows 95, where we really saw a completely new. GUI being introduced to the PC world. Now as you read through your book, pay special attention to these different milestones that have occurred in adopting the use of computer technology. And you see way back as 1940 we had the invention of our CPU or central processing unit and different peripheral devices for computers. As we move through the decades we have obviously different milestones that we occur through and the 1950s and 60s we saw a very early set of the computers in very large corporations such as the government uh, because these were so expensive and you needed very vast resources to be able to include these into the organization. Not only were these very large, they were very centralized, so they were used as kind of a takeover some of the manual tasks that were being performed by users before, kind of automating them. 
and the first steps towards this decentralized computing were the use of terminals to connect workers to a central system and the introduction of less power but less expensive workgroup computers. Now, these were very early computers so they took up a lot of room and they weren't programmed by end users they were programmed by computer programmers. Now these early computer professionals were the only ones that could make these changes where today we kind of take that for granted because of the GUIs we have now we can you know kind of modify our programs as we wanted. Back in these early decades that was not able that ability was not there for end users. Now as we go through the 70s and 80s here we see that there was a development of end user computing that was spurred by many different industry tens and allowed the widespread use of workgroup computers. Here we saw the development of these terminals that could be displayed and worked on at our workers desks and they could be connected directly to a large network computer system in those type of businesses that could still afford this. Now the development of smaller less expensive computer systems allowed the cost of ownership to businesses and government agencies to maybe only not only be in governments but also to spread around to other agencies that were large enough to afford them and be able to provide the support that was needed to automate those processes that were done manually before but we really didn't see that huge growth until we moved into the 90s. And here in the 90s we really started to see that more and more companies were bringing in these desktop computers and and this kind of ushered in the era of end user computing. There are several trends that converged in the 80s that made widespread transition to de decentralized end user computing possible. We saw a backlog of requests for new computer applications from businesses. There was also an increase in the number of knowledge workers. There was the availability of inexpensive personal computers, you know, where we still saw it cost thousands of dollars, but it was a far greater reduction than what we saw from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and even the 80s. We also saw that there was an availability of inexpensive productive software where before we had you know programmers that were writing these individual programs that were usually kind of focused on a certain business and so they were proprietary well now we were able to get some kind of off-the-shelf type software and then we had the development of user-friendly graphical user interfaces introduced into the 90s such as with Windows 3.1 and Windows 95 Lastly, one of the best pieces that we got from the 1990s was the introduction of the internet and its use that we could now bring into the business as well as the home use. Now workers and even you know those home users now saw this global network that was available to them for information, sharing information, and the many tasks that we kind of take for granted now. On the early introduction of desktop computers, we kind of saw where some people kind of abused their power or just went ahead and went out and bought computers, and some people in the organization thought, oh, that's just a waste of money to buy these type of toys. Well, as we moved into the 1990s and early 2000s, companies saw, hey, we have a great need for these now, and we saw that distributed computing occurred where computer resources are distributed throughout different organizations according to the location and the needs of those workers who actually needed those computers. We may find that kind of funny now that well everybody's using a computer. Well it all started as a process and it definitely grew in the late 90s and now into the 21st century. Here recently, or what seems recently, in 2010 we really saw an introduction of cloud computing and now we hear the cloud term used all the time. But cloud computing is just computer resources are stored and processed centrally on powerful internet servers but delivered locally via software applications. You've probably used a lot of these now. You probably use like, you know, cloud storage for some of your files or sharing pictures or whatever and sending links from those type of devices or, or those 
hosts. Uh, cloud computing is now becoming a industry trend where, especially for like security, where we are not only housing our important information locally, but we're also using cloud computing to store our information out there in case there was a disaster and we needed to recover that important data. Now it's really important for computer professionals to understand the variety of environments and situations in which organizations provide the different levels of technical support to their knowledge workers. So it's helpful to recognize the different types of our end users. So if we look at this, we can see that we can classify end users based on several different categories according to the environment, whether it's for personal or for work use. We can see based on, we can classify those end users based on their skill level, whether they're novice or if they kind of, they have a good understanding, but they're not quite an expert, or even those people who are experts. We have a level of classify, classifying them such on their frequency of use. Is this someone who uses the computer all day long, or is this someone who just, you know, occasionally uses it, you know, some type of executive or someone at a office who might have a function, but they don't really do that that often. They would be like an occasional level of frequency. We can also use a classification of their software use, whether it's some type of word processing or presentation software, whether it's email, or there's very, very many of these that we can put our users into. Now some people may only use basic software features, so we can classify them on the features that they use. You know, they may only know how to perform a limited set of tasks or some usually, you know, some very common features of a certain program. So we just look at how they are on their features that they use for that software. We can also look at the classification of the relationship to the support provider, whether they're an internal user who kind of works within the overall organization that provides different support services, or they could be external users who are individuals who kind of, you know, maybe are clients or customers located outside of that organization.